It's estimated that hearing loss affects nearly 9 million Americans over the age of 65 and 10 million ages 45 to 64. A survey by the American Academy of Audiology found that significantly more seniors with untreated hearing loss reported feelings of sadness and depression than those with assistive hearing devices. Hearing loss is a chronic disorder and should not be considered a normal part of aging. Hello, my name is Ann Hall, and on this edition of Mature Living, we'll take an in-depth look at what life is like for people with hearing loss and introduce you to advocacy programs, new assistive hearing devices, and present information from experts on how older adults with hearing loss can improve the quality of their life. Things we hear every day have an effect on the way we feel. When we cross the street and hear a blaring horn, we jump, our heart races. The sound of nature, birds singing and babbling brooks, our heart rate may slow down and we can feel relaxed. Sounds are an integral part of our life. Now, imagine the familiar sounds of your loved ones talking, your favorite song, now imagine those sounds slowly fading and becoming difficult to hear or understand. Now imagine total silence. This is the quieting world people with hearing loss live in. Advancements in technology, as well as social acceptance, have helped many with hearing loss live better quality lives. However, untreated, Hearing loss has serious emotional and social consequences for older adults that go undetected. Everyone, no matter what age, thrives on communication. Without it, the world is a lonely place. A National Council on Aging study surveyed 2,300 hearing impaired adults aged 50 and older and found that those with untreated hearing loss were more likely to report depression, anxiety, and paranoia, and were less likely to participate in organized social activities compared to those who wear hearing aids. Researchers have also tied hearing loss to cognitive impairment and memory issues. I said it before, hearing is more about the brain than the ear. And just this past year, there's a lot more research saying that even if you have a mild to moderate hearing loss, it affects your memory, it affects your fatigue level, and it affects your accuracy doing simple tasks if there's any speech involved. Because my brain, if you're talking to me and I can't hear and I'm trying to do something, my brain is over tasks and has to do two things at the same time. So we're really partnering with physicians, primary care especially, to make that a routine part of questions that they ask. For me, that's a big issue um, for education because dementia testing is probably mostly verbal and most people never have their hearing tests. So that's really might affect the result. Northern Virginia Resource Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Persons is an organization whose mission is to empower hard of hearing persons and their families through advocacy, education, and community involvement. Bonnie O'Leary lost her hearing later in life and now works for NBCR as an outreach coordinator. She explains some of the misconceptions many people have about hearing loss and aging. One in particular that we see is that sometimes People who are in that environment with, with seniors misinterpret some of the symptoms of hearing loss as being symptoms of dementia. I was in a retirement community some years back doing a training only to find out that they had admitted a 90-year-old and put her on the dementia floor. And it wasn't until a couple of months after she was there that they discovered she was stone cold deaf. 
she didn't have dementia at all. But some of the, the responses are very, very similar. That blank stare, uh, looking confused, looking like you have no idea where you are or what you're doing. Uh, that having been said, there are new studies that have come out in the last couple of years that are showing that there is a greater risk of early onset dementia among people who don't treat their hearing loss. Here are a few of the warning signs you may be losing your hearing. Hearing sounds but not understanding them. Voices are heard but not understood. Often needing to ask people to repeat what they say. Turning the TV or radio louder than other people find comfortable. Dizziness or pain in the ears. Ringing, buzzing, or other sounds in the ear. Difficulty hearing at the theater, restaurant, mall, or other noisy situations. Social withdrawal. Difficulty understanding speech if the speaker's face is not visible. If you suspect you have hearing loss, talk to your family doctor. A physical checkup can show if something else may be the cause. Get a complete hearing evaluation from a licensed audiologist. Vivian Muccio is a board-certified licensed audiologist in Fairfax who offers free hearing tests at her office to anyone who wants one. She talks about the process of a hearing test. Well, first we're going to do an uh, intake on you to see personally how you think you're hearing, what's your family history, do you have any medical problems that need addressed. Um, we're also going to ask you what's your lifestyle, because everybody does a, lives a different lifestyle. Are you in noisy environments? Are you in choir environments? Are you traveling? You know, are you um, active? Physically, do you go jogging every day? We're going to ask you those kind of questions about your lifestyle so we can determine what, what you are as an individual and what your hearing aid needs might be. After the interview, I'm going to check your ears for wax and the health of your ear. I'm looking at the eardrum to see if it looks nice and clear. It should look transparent. I'm looking to see if there's any wax blocking the ear. I'm looking to see if maybe there's some fungus in the ear medically that needs to be treated and would refer you to a doctor for treatment like that. Is the eardrum intact? Is there a hole in the ear? Is there any malformation of the ear itself? Then we're going to take you back and actually find your thresholds or your actual hearing acuity by testing you in the booth. We're going to give you some little beeps or whistles to listen to in both ears and we're also going to do some speech testing to see the clarity of your ear, not just the loudness that you need or how your hearing is. It's going to tell me the range and that might determine somewhat the hearing aid, but now hearing aids have gotten more powerful and smaller, so you can get a really tiny hearing aid and still get a lot of power out that. So that's kind of changing as the technology changes. Everything's about the computer chip now, and so we're actually programming your data from the hearing test into the hearing aid computer chip and, and, and making as close as of a match we can. Hearing aids come in different styles. They can go over the ear. They can go in the ear and be very tiny and practically invisible nowadays. And some hearing aids can actually be fit that we put it in for three months and we take it out every three months and put a new one in. You can swim with it, shower with it, sleep with it, and that's something new that's just come around probably within the past five years. Because the cost of hearing aids can be expensive, many older adults and family caregivers avoid scheduling a hearing test and purchase less expensive options that don't work, such as amplifiers that can be purchased on the internet. If you just go and get something that's not a hearing aid, that just an amplifier, you're going to be picking up some sounds that you want, but a lot of sounds that you don't want, typically background noise, things like that. But the technology is doing more for noise than ever before, and it didn't used to do that. So if that's an issue for you, if you're very active going to noisy places, noisy restaurants, you might want to look into the technology because we want to maximize your usable hearing because again, it's all about the brain. The better the brain gets the signal, the better the, it's clear, the brain has to do less work. Medicaid in Virginia does not cover the cost of hearing aids for people over age 21. However, other options are available through private insurance and government programs, nonprofit hearing centers, and state resource programs. Advocacy organizations such as the Northern Virginia Resource Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Persons maintains a large database of resource options for financial assistance. There are many different types of hearing health professionals that do hearing tests. And before you purchase hearing aids or assistive devices, do your homework to make sure they are legitimate. The Fairfax County Department of Consumer Affairs offers this advice. 
Well, when you're shopping for a hearing aid, you need to make sure that you get a referral from a doctor to a licensed audiologist and ask the audiologist to prescribe the type of instrument that you need specifically for your deficiency. Go to a place that they know has had good customer relations. If somebody responds to an ad for a free hearing test, they should first find out whether the person giving the test is a licensed audiologist. Always ask for a copy of the audiology report so they can take it to a licensed audiologist for comparison testing or to their doctor. Some suppliers will sell you or attempt to sell you insurance when you purchase a hearing aid. What you might want to do is compare it through your own home insurance company because sometimes it's cheaper to get a floater policy from your personal insurer than to pay for the extended warranty insurance that's sold to you from the supplier. Well, in Virginia, you have several laws. One of them addresses 30 days for the return of a hearing aid from the date of the delivery. The other one, allows you to either take legal action if the company doesn't comply with the law, or they can come to consumer affairs. We do mediation and arbitration. Arbitration is binding, and that can be enforced. A very good friend of mine did an elder hostel study years ago. He went across the country with a colleague, and they interviewed many, many seniors who were late deafened, and the grief is absolutely astounding. Um, you, it's like losing a part of yourself. When you've been hearing for most of your life, you could juggle many, many balls at once. You can go here and there and catch the aside at the end of the table and catch the gossip at the water cooler. When that's gone, you're disconnected. You can be at a dining room table with all of your loved ones, your family, your friends, all the people in the world you care about the most, and it's like watching a foreign language film without subtitles. The logical result of that is you stop going. You turn down invitations because you don't want to put yourself through that, and then you become lonely, you become very isolated, and um, it's, it's a very, a um, bad thing for mental health overall, especially when you're older, you've got all these other issues on your plate. Now you don't hear, so you just sit at home by yourself. Welcome to our Mature Living program, Living in a Quieting World. I'm with Cheryl Hepner, Executive Director of the Northern Virginia Resource Center. Cheryl was deafened before her seventh birthday by spinal meningitis. She attended public school with hearing classmates and graduated with a degree in journalism from Penn State. She is a tireless advocate on national, state, regional, and local levels, and she voices, signs, speech reads, and is an avid user of assistive technology. Hi, Cheryl. You're an amazing woman, and I'm so glad that you're here to talk with us today about um, improving the lives of older adults with hearing loss. Tell me a little bit about your hearing loss and the personal challenges you've had to overcome. Thank you. I lost my hearing at the age of six, and it was a tough time back then, in the 50s. I grew up winning in a world that I couldn't fully participate in because I couldn't understand the people who talked to me, and they couldn't understand me because my voice trained to actually do, but they couldn't hear myself. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky to have good people in my life. My parents who insisted that I work very hard. A wonderful audiologist who helped me learned to speak a little better and when he believed in me. He was so good he even helped me with my schoolwork. Oh, I did hang when I was much younger having to wear a very large hearing aid on my dress, which made me feel like a robot. <laughs> Back then robots were not as cool as they are now. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So now you're here at the NVRC. Tell us a little bit about the NVRC and the mission of the NVRC. NVRC's mission is to empower individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing and their families mm -hmm. through education, advocacy, and community involvement. You mentioned advocacy. What is some of the advocacy work that you're doing? We advocate in so many areas that it's hard to reach them all. We've advocated for television captioning, for captioning on the internet. We've advocated against all kinds of discrimination. We've been working a lot more on human rights issues. We have worked with manufacturers to help them make their products more accessible and encourage them to do that. How can NVRC help people with hearing loss improve the quality of their lives? We have a wide variety of programs and lots of good information. And I think that if people contact us, they would be pleasantly surprised by the resources that we have. We have a very large number of factories that they can access on our website and download at no charge or they could come here and we could give them the information too. You'll be hearing from Bonnie about the programs that we do for outreach and education. But we do even the small things like people who call us and want to know where they can get their hearing aid fixed. What are some of the successful advocacy programs that NVRC has been involved with? I guess Probably one of our biggest successes was helping to get captions put on television program years ago. And we also were instrumental in helping to make sure that that captioning was always available in emergencies, in news broadcasts, because that information is critical. And Along with that, we've also been a leader in emergency preparedness for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. We are known for completing an annual report in 2004 that got national attention and helped to lead to a lot of other things. That's wonderful. What about mandatory closed captioning in television and internet? What's the, the uh, current status of that? The internet has been an interesting challenge. I was very happy to be part of a coalition called CUT, Coalition of Organizations for Acceptable Technology, that helped to pass the bill in Congress. And following the passage, I was very fortunate to be able to work on the regulations and how they would be implemented. Captionings come to the internet. It's still limited though, because that law only applies to programs that have previously been broadcast on television. Mm -hmm. And so there is still a very large swath of the internet that does not have captions. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I would like to see everything captioned. Thank you so much for your time today, Cheryl. You're welcome. The Northern Virginia Resource Center maintains a database of more than 2,000 resources and referral listings for anyone who is deaf or has hearing loss. Visit them on the web at nvrc.org or call them at 703-352-9055, TTY 9056. You can also stop by and visit their office, located at 3951 Pender Drive, Suite 130. Coming up next, a closer look at some of the assistive devices you can try out at NVRC. And we'll introduce you to a program that helps qualified individuals with the cost of this new technology. Don't go away. We'll be right back. So, I got this new family. 
and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Watch Mature Living weekdays at noon on Channel 16. hearing aids and still have trouble hearing the alarm clock in the morning? Or trouble with one-on-one -on -one conversations? Here at the Resource Center, residents who are deaf or hard of hearing will find an array of assistive listening devices such as telephones, doorbells, neck loops, or alarm clocks that can be tested out before purchasing from an outside vendor. Hearing aids are more custom fit to you. Um, you work with an audiologist, and because they can, they can see, they've done the test to see where your hearing loss is happening. So a hearing aid can be more closely fit to what your needs are um, for your hearing loss to boost those frequencies you're having trouble with. Whereas general assistive technology is the rest of the things that can help, either working with or without a hearing aid. Things like amplified telephones, uh, a personal amplifier to help you turn up the volume on the person you're speaking with. Are you noticing that you hear men's voices better than Assistive men? listening yeah, devices voices are divided up into three you? categories, telephones, signaling, and listening devices. An assistive technology specialist will work closely with you to help you determine which devices will fit your needs. Well, the first step, we encourage folks to go to their audiologist because knowing where exactly their hearing loss is happening gives them a better starting point. And then we can sit down with them, talk about what their experience is. You know, do they hear men's voices versus women's voices better? What kinds of situations? Is it at home with the TV and the telephone? Or is it out when they're with friends? Um, we talk with them about the kinds of situations where they're experiencing problems. And then we can pull down some of the different devices for them to try. Um, these are phones that can amplify, so they bring up the volume. A lot of times they also have the tone control. Um, which uh, helps you adjust the frequency. If you hear low voices better, you want to boost that up so you can understand more. Um, you could also find uh, caption telephones in that category. The other category is signaling devices, and that's where you've got the amplified uh, doorbells and telephone ringers. If sound no longer helps you, there's also devices that can flash the lights so that it gets your attention that there's somebody at the door, somebody uh, calling you on the telephone. And then you have listening technology, so assistive listening devices, or ALDs. Um, these are the things that can help with the television, one-on-one uh, -on -one communication, like in the car, where it lets you control the volume that you're listening to. Um, that can work with hearing aids, with what's called a neck loop that gives a direct feed to your hearing aids. Um, or you can just use headphones or earbuds to, uh, to use the listening devices. The Virginia Department for Deaf and Hard of Hearing has a program called Loan to Own. And this is the current incarnation of the Technology Assistance Program. This program was set up to help Virginia residents who are deaf, hard of hearing, deaf blind, late deafened, to get communications equipment, telephones and signaling devices to help them stay more connected. This program looks at how many people live in the household and then also what the monthly income is for the household so that um, if, if their income is below a certain amount, the equipment is for free. Uh, if it's above that, they might pay part of the cost. Um, but that program was set up to help Virginia residents to get the equipment they need. Thanks for joining us today. For information and resources on hearing loss, contact the Northern Virginia Resource Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Persons. Call 703-352-9055.
TTY9056 or visit their website at nvrc.org. And for information on county services for older adults, including the nutrition programs Meals on Wheels and Congregate Meals, go to fairfaxcounty.gov slash DFS slash older adults or call 703-324-7948. My name is Ann Hall. Thanks for watching Mature Living.